right, we're back. Funk and Focus, Urban Dance and Dialogue, episode five. Today we're talking about being musical versus musicality. And um, yeah, we're going to have some discussion today. We're going to be talking about the ins and outs of music with dance. Shout out to all the people joining on Future Assassins Instagram. We have Funk and Focus YouTube going. As always, um, shout out Urban Artistry at Urban Artistry DC at Funk and Focus Instagram. And we're just going to get this thing cracking. I'm still out here in Copenhagen. I'm here till November 30th. The Clash Festival was dope. We had a good time out here training, hanging out, doing my thing. So, all right, topic for today is a very broad and simple one, being musical versus musicality. What are the differences? What's the definition of these things for you guys? Um, how can we be more connected to musicians and really become more musical um how did that term come about how did we get to this point where we're talking about musicality in dance when that's something that usually musicians are talking about um and later we'll talk about some documentaries for music and some different dancers that you know are really great examples of what i feel being musical is all about so ah all right musicality so the way that most dancers use the term is based around this idea of beat killing. We are in the era of the beat kill. This was not always a thing. Back in the day, people did not use the word musicality when it came to dance. Um, people just danced to the music and that's just what folks did. It wasn't, it wasn't something you had to practice. It was something that was common knowledge. To dance to the music and to listen to the sounds in the song um, and at some point over the years from my experience the way the, the place that I saw a lot of change and more focus on what people consider musicality or beat killing which is the common definition of musicality was in the early 2000s Aki vs Sally Sly b-boy summit 2001 if you watch that battle Aki was dancing to the music in a in a new way where people kind of said, oh, wait, he really knows the song. Like he really knows all the sounds and he was accenting the music in this way that made it obvious that he understood and really listened and knew a lot of the sounds in the song. Um, I'm not sure who he was inspired by for that. I know also around that time in the early 2000s, Pop and Pete had a lot of videos coming out. Uh, they were selling the VHS tapes and and showing the footage from their performances. And he also was accenting a lot of music um, more and more than uh, what was being done in the past. Uh, and there was an emphasis, a push on people accenting the sounds. But what happened is now today, the, the common definition of musicality, even if you just write what is musicality on YouTube, you're gonna see a lot of like really beat killy type videos it's going to be you know the twins and wadey and uh hoan and the people that we know as like the beat killers um and people are kind of defining musicality around just that small aspect of it um so for me musicality is not um just hitting the beats musicality is about being musical so some people focus on musicality or the idea of hitting certain sounds in a song and other people that are just being musical have the option to be musical in many different ways. Um, so before I get into what that is for me, let me just read the definition of musicality straight off the internet. Here's a few definitions. First one is sensitivity, knowledge of, or talent for music. The second one is quality or state of being musical. The third one is quality of having a pleasant sound. 
So that third one there is more like from a musician's perspective, but we could think of that in dance as someone that just has a nice vibe or a nice flow or kind of the character of the song. Um, the first two definitions are basically saying that musicality is actually just being musical. They're actually the same thing if you go off of this definition from 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 Google here. Like um so that's that's kind of how I feel about it, um, is that they actually are the same thing, but I feel like there's an issue with people just focusing on instrumentation and only one aspect of musicality. Um, so I got four things I'm going to give you guys, and then I'm going to open this up for conversation and dialogue. Four core principles that I see when it comes to musicality or being musical. Really, I'm just going to start saying being musical, because for me, that's a better way to say it because I don't want any confusion about, oh, musicality, oh, he killed the beat. Oh, he heard that little sound and went ding, 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 ding. Like that, to me, that's elementary, okay? The way people are using musicality today is very, 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 very basic. It's, it's basic uh, uh, music, musicality, I would say, because it's just instrumentation. People are dissecting the song and just kind of like accenting the sounds that they hear, but they're they're cutting their flow. Their character doesn't match the song so much. Rhythmically, it's a bit weak. Like um, wordplay is coming back into into play now. People really like to act out the words and do these things. But there's just a lot, a lot, a lot of ways to be musical. And if we're only focusing on musicality as accenting the instrumentation, the beats. Um, that's just the beginning. So these videos that are showcasing these guys killing the beat on YouTube are really, really a bad definition of what good musicality is. I think it's really unhealthy for people to watch that as the example because it's so basic and it's almost the easy, quick way to get a cheer. So it's kind of like a cheat. You can, if you can learn to accent the beat, then that's kind of a cheat. You're musical, you know, you have musicality just because you understand how to hit the beat and you memorize the song and you memorized all the songs that they play in the battle. So every time you get 45 seconds and what can you do to impress someone in 45 seconds? Guess what? You're going to hit the beat and the whole crowd's going to go, wow, that's so great. And a lot of us with a little bit more of an experience lens are seeing that kind of like, it's, I, it's basic. It's just the beginning. So we have this era where we're focused so much on technique as poppers and so much about how we're moving and how it looks that we're really not diving into music at all. We were losing this idea that musicians and dancers should be doing these things in the same room. Really the knowledge that the musicians have is the, the knowledge that we want. Like I'm not even the, the ultimate person to speak on this. Um, for me, it's best to talk about, talk about this with musicians really, watch musicians, study musicians. Um, one of my teachers for this in, in dance, uh, Rashad and Damon um, mostly, but Damon is a drummer. So he's a musician, he understands things rhythmically, time signatures, triplets, paradiddles, all these different ways to use rhythm that people in the dance scene just have no clue about. And it's one of the biggest reasons why people don't understand what Damon's doing. They don't understand it because rhythmically it's so advanced that they're not comprehending what's happening. They're waiting to see that one thing that they know. They know about the beat kill because you could show that to anybody you could show a beat kill to anybody and they're going to understand it. It's a watered down way to attack music. It's basic and so simple and it's, it's corny. It's just really corny. You know, like it's, if you do that for your whole career and think you have great musicality, like you're cheating yourself kind of, you know, you're not really going as deep as you can with this music thing. And uh, so I think that's important. So sorry, back to the four things, four things character and color of the song, the mood of the song, right? When we listen to music, every genre has a different mood, blues to funk, to rock and roll. And that's sort of the color, the tone of the song. How does it just make you feel overall when you hear it? 
this is a great place to start. It's also the place where a lot of people, they don't, they miss that. This also can give you a lot of flow, right? Next is instrumentation. Instrumentation is dissecting the sounds, listening to what we're hearing in the song, not only rhythmically what we're hearing in the song, but emotionally, what does each sound make you feel? Uh, the mood, <laughs> how does it, how does the sounds make you feel? How does that sound make you want to move based on how it feels? Not on just the rhythm of it, because there's a lot of ding, 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 and it's kind of ding, 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 ding. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, instrumentation, right? So that's dissecting the song. Already those two together are powerful. If you have too much of the ding 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 <laughs> and not enough flow and character and mood of the song, it, it looks cut. When you ding ding ding, you cut your flow. You lose this. When you have the flow and you have the ba boom 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 go do da 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 ba boom, but it keeps it boom 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 but you have this undercurrent, this flow, this color of the song, right? Which is why bass lines are so important usually in dance. Um, and if you just have a simple flow, that can get boring too if you're only on quarter notes. So it is important. Timing and instruments are important, but let's go to number three. Number three is rhythms, okay? You can use instrumentation to create rhythms. You can use multiple sounds to create your own rhythms, but you can also just create your own rhythms. It's one of the reasons why I'll say like dances like Crump are beating a lot of poppers in battles is because not only are they more free in general, but they have more rhythm patterns. Popping is lacking in rhythm patterns. Rhythm is <laughs> really basic, you know. So creating your own rhythms within the template of the song, super important. And the fourth piece I'll talk about is just uh, vocals. So rhythmically, what are the vocals doing and the message in the vocals? What are they saying? How do you interpret that in a literal way by acting it out, which is what everybody's doing, kind of just acting out the words? Or how do you interpret that in a different way? If they say something and you interpret it in a new way, right, that's a little bit less obvious. All right, so two really common things that are happening. People accenting the beat instrumentation with no flow, no rhythm creation, no wordplay. And then the other thing that's starting to happen a lot is a lot of wordplay, but really literal, right? So they're basically going like, oh, shot him in the head, shot him in the head. Oh, dust my shoulder off, dust my shoulder off. And people go, oh, he dusted his shoulder off. And again, there's those, those are four things, right, that I gave you, and that's not all of what music, being musical is. Those are just four simple things that you can start from, and you can say, okay, do I have this one? Do I have a little of that, a little of that? Okay, cool, there's some balance there, you know, but that's not the end all be all. There's plenty of ways, there's so many things, even musically, um, that we don't understand because we're not musicians. We have to study musicians triplets, time signatures, polyrhythms, paradiddles, all these different tones, the way they feel and move while they're playing their instruments, all of that is so, so important. We have to learn to feel a bit more like the music than just to learn the techniques, right? Popping has this way of becoming so over-technicalized that we forget about trying to feel like what we're hearing, you know? And even this idea of what people say musicality is, these beat kills and hitting all the beats, it still doesn't come with the emotion so much of like, it becomes technical. That See, this is one thing that I'll say before I open it up, is that people turned musicality into a technique because some people just weren't funky. Some people just couldn't get with the music. They couldn't match the sound. So... They said, oh, let's use this word musicality. That sounds interesting. Hmm. Oh, what's musicality? Let's define it now. Let's define it. Let's define what musicality is. Oh, it's hitting the sounds. Okay, so we get to teach it now with hitting the sounds. That's what musicality is. And, uh, you know, now we have a technique for it. So people basically started to make 
being musical a technical thing because they weren't musical people. And that is one of the biggest issues with what people define musicality as today, which is why musicality versus being musical, I say be musical all day, every day, you know, but I also will say that musicality is supposed to be being musical. That's what it's supposed to be for me, you know. So, all right. That's just some background info. Questions that I'll put on the table. What do you guys feel the difference between musicality and being musical is? Um, do you guys see any problems with beat killing and accenting? Or do you guys think that that's evolving musicality and being musical? Um, and let's talk about dancers that we really think are some of our favorite, most musical dancers. Um, in whatever style it may be that you guys are uh, are coming from. So let's head over to Instagram and see what's going on. All right. Folks are joining. What's up? Hi, Aaron says it's basic and too obvious. The timing thing you're talking about, people only accent. That is very true, I believe. And I also want to say that I don't think that there's something wrong with accenting the music. It's just that it's oversaturated with people accenting the sounds and they do it in a way that is like they're teaching you. Like, I really don't like that when they do it like, like I can't understand it. You know, it's like, it's like watering something down, you know, like, watering it down so everybody in the room will understand like there's no subtlety to that like just like good beer and good wine the subtleties or good food a good meal it's the subtle differences the subtle things that make it so nice that make it so much better you know and when people are teaching you that they hit that sound ooh, look i did it did everybody get it i made it so simple that everybody could get it for me, that's watering it down. Like examples for me of people that don't water it down, right? That are so musical, but the only way you'll get it is if you really, really listen and pay attention to the subtle way they're dancing to the music, not the obvious way, not the way that people are teaching you the, the sound they're dancing to. Damon and Rashad are the first two that come to mind. Uh, I have a, a little list I'll, I'll share with you guys a little bit later, but Damon, watch um, Damon Frost versus Bishop and just really listen to the music and watch his body and watch how much he's so, so musical. Um, I Love This Dance, I think is the name of that event where they pick the music for each other. Watch Damon versus Bishop. It's it is one of the most musical rounds I've ever seen, but most of the time when you watch Damon, rhythmically, it's so advanced. So there's a lot going over people's heads. A lot of people don't understand Damon's style. They think, the, I don't understand it. Oh, is it sloppy or what? Is it offbeat? They don't get it. It's because you just don't understand rhythm. You just don't get it. Like you have to literally study and understand these things to be able to comprehend what Damon's doing. But also you have to have a subtle ear. Don't look for what's obvious. People used to say about Rashad, they used to say, oh, wow, he let so many beats go by. Oh, wow, that's interesting. And it's like, well, why does he have to hit an accent and show you that he hears all those sounds? Like, he doesn't have to do that. Like, that is just the way that most people do it. It doesn't mean that everybody has to be musical in the same way. And that's what I mean about people turning musicality into a technique. Oh, you're not doing it the technique that we understand it. And people are doing that with movement too. Or you're not doing the technique that we like. And again, it's killing the freedom and the funk. Wise Wave. Damon really dope with rhythm without beat killing. Yep. Damon Frost. His workshops are incredible. Check him out. Every time he does rhythm classes, he has an exercise he calls the BIP. Everybody in Sweden knows about the BIP. It's a coordination with your mouth, uh, your hand clapping, and your feet stomping. And it covers quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenths. I mean, it's crazy coordination and rhythm. Damon is is your guy. 
to check out. Okay, my mom's on. What's up, mom? Mom's hanging out, checking it out. Hi, Aaron. Beat kills are fine with me, but I would like to see creative approaches. I don't like it when it's too obvious and everyone says, ooh. Yeah, for sure. Like the, the idea of creative approaches is awesome. Like even with um, some of the wordplay that they do in Memphis, people actually have gotten really creative with the wordplay um, and kind of like they're really, you know, doing it in creative ways. At first I was kind of like, oh, are they doing it so literally, so obvious. And now it's, sometimes it's getting a little bit more creative the way they approach it. You could do the same thing with instrumentation. There's so many ways to do it, which I'll talk about now. Shoshan says, hi, how to make your own rhythm? Great question. So again, Damon and Rashad are the best to ask this. Let me give you just some basic ideas. So I'll give you two, right? One thing you can do is um, you can use a simple template quarter notes and you can fill in this template with ands, us, and ease, right? So let's go one n, one n, three n. Okay, let's go back to our basic. Let's add let's add a a, a one. Let's add an E. One E, three E, back to that. Again, one E, two, three, and four, combo. Okay, I'm not gonna give away too many secrets on this because you guys gotta, you guys really gotta hit up Damon and Rashad for this. But basically, if you know how to count music, you can create your own rhythms, right? Without a song on. But that's not technically dance, that's just learning to do this and fill in the space, okay? But from there, it's also about like how to put that on the template of the music. You can always just do that and create those rhythms right on top of the music, but also how are you playing in and out of the sounds? Maybe you do a piece of the bass line and then the snare and the and on the hi-hat. Maybe you do a, the snare to the, sn to the snare, to 16th notes, to the bass. And you chop some of the sounds up. You can create rhythm based on instrumentation. All the people that are just accenting the, the sounds, mix those sounds up. You'll start to create your own patterns. Don't just hit one sound, hit two or three at a time. Watch this video, uh, Rashad, just type Rashad hip hop. There's a video of him dancing in, the, uh, in Georgetown and it's like nighttime, he's wearing a blue polo t-shirt and he's doing hip hop, but he is so all over the music. He's dancing to so many sounds at once and that is being musical. When you can dance to multiple sounds at once, not just the one sound that's obvious for everybody to hear. All right, Caden, beat killing and accenting excessively feels mechanical. It's visually impressive, but it's devoid of feeling word yeah so true if you guys haven't seen Caden you gotta check out the way he's moving it's real funky and real free he's doing some nice stuff and uh, I would say it's not typical and it's it has something there's some special definitely with with what you're doing bro so yeah we've been we've been watching and we really like what you're doing man. it's really funky and free it's that's some straight boogaloo that's the definition of boogaloo right there funky and free so you know but it's cool you get it that and see hitting the beat excessively cuts your flow it kills your funk and that's what he's saying it's devoid of feeling aaron says i feel that soul is very musical mm -hmm. gianni Beat kills often takes away from the actual dance. Some people dance like they need to hit every note or sound in the music that they forgot to dance. Right. Exactly. That's pretty much a, I mean, that's obvious. It's hard for people to not 
get that. I feel like people have to have realized that by now. It's like when you excessively hit the beat, you cut your flow, you forget to dance, right? Dance is just to express what is your purpose with this solo? Like, what do you want us to feel? Like excessive beat killing just says that you want us to know you heard a million sounds, but you still, <laughs> the music is here, right? What, uh, you know, even songs, even music styles that are real sporadic like that, like bebop, there's still a constant tempo. And if you're not locked in, you know, and you're not in and out of this, it's, it's a bit much. And like I said, it can be dope if you know how to do it and you know how to go in and out of it. But when it's in excess and you can't do anything other, other than that, it's, it's really, um, you're lacking some, some skill sets that you might need to add. Wise wave, Damon's rhythm drills are crazy. Yo, every time I do the bip drill, I'm like a beginner again. It's like the first time I ever did anything. I'm like, uh, bip, bip. <laughs> I'm so off. And most of the people in the class are like that, you know? Like I'm waiting for the day for someone to actually master that thing that he can do. Cause he's the only one. He's the only one that can do the bip thing so well. And I'm, I'm waiting to see who's gonna really pick up on it. But notice Damon's in Sweden, right? Look at how the Swedish dancers move. They have a funk and a freedom to the way they move. And look at the, the guys that lock. A-Train, Marcus, Razzle Dazzle, their locking style is so original and rhythmic because they got the mood of the song, they got instrumentation, and they got rhythms, extra rhythms. It's the next wave. For me, it's the next thing. You know, like, like how strutting is now so popular and how like beat killing became popular in the early 2000s and how like everybody wants to juke now rhythm creation watch watch what i say rhythm creation is the next thing especially like because you know we're talking about it now we're getting these dialogues going and you see it with damon you see it with rashad people this will be something really nice for people but if we want to keep up with some of these other styles we're definitely going to have to get a lot more rhythmic Hi, Aaron. In my opinion, I like tempo when he was popping. Word. Definitely. All right. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So, Russ, Assassin's Urban Artistry. I'm looking for a higher understanding of music or pulling a sound that is lower register that will make a track new or refresh to how people hear not a weird conceptual way by any means. All right, so a little bit, Russ is a, a dancer, musician, DJ, so a little bit of a perspective from that. You know, people that are, that Russell's really musically inclined, like he he's like a dancer when you watch me, super musically inclined, you know, but he's also involved in DJing, you know, playing piano, and he's watching documentaries, he's studying, like he knows music in and out. He grew up listening to a lot of this music. Like this is, this is, yeah. For, for some folks, this was just innate. It was the way they came up. And uh, for others, you know, you kind of got to break it down and see what you can understand. But there's a lot more, <laughs> we, we're, we're behind. Fish sauce, funk, how does cultural context or different musical roots play into what we think is musical? Wow, that's a good question. What we think is musical, do you mean like what we like musically? Or you mean like when we're watching a dancer, what we think is a, a musical solo? You know, like because, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, to be honest, like, I think it's also about like how much you understand just about music in general, like outside of a cultural context. But I will say that like, for instance, I'll say this, a lot of black folks that created these dances didn't need the word musicality. 
because they knew how to dance to the music. They grew up, their parents were playing blues and soul and rock and roll and they were playing funk and they were dancing family barbecues and hanging around, you know, like this was culture, like music and dance was culture for them. It was the way they grew up. So like, you know, like to be around it all the time is the thing that makes you musically inclined to be around it, to, to understand it. Or some people aren't, didn't grow up like that. Like me, I didn't grow up like that. And like my parents listened to like, my mom listened to Madonna. My dad listened to like classic rock. So I know some of that, those songs, but when it comes to funk and the music that we dance to for, for popping, I had to go back and listen and try to make it a part of who I am. And that's just the truth, you know? So like, like I said, there's certain people that you go to for these, for learning these types of things. And how do you do it? You know, you asked Rashad and Damon, how do you really think about this stuff? Like when you're dancing and being musical, I do think that where you grow up has to do with like what you appreciate in music and what you hear, what you tune into. Like, uh, I hate to be, you know, stereotypical and this is not the case all the time, but like, Rashad loves the bass line and I like keys and drawn out sounds and guitar and things that can be drawn out, you know, like, and, you know, I don't know if you guys seen that Dave Chappelle thing where he's like, look how the white people go crazy when the electric guitar comes on and look how the black folks go crazy when the drums and the bass go. And then he plays uh, the electric keyboard for the Asians. So it's kind of funny and stereotypical, but it has to do with like, culturally the music you were just brought up on you know in the states we're so mixed up now and everybody comes up on hip-hop these days so people have an ear for drum and bass you know people love drum and bass but really good question i'd love to hear what other people have to say about that one poppers with good musicality in your opinion i'm going to come to that at the end mime Octopus, that's a funny name. Is the music you create like you control it or the music controls you? But it's both. If the music controls you too much, then you don't you don't have a conscious control of what you're presenting and how you're presenting it. Um, if you control the music too much, that might even be worse though, because then you're just literally not you're dancing so much from here. That's kind of the idea of dancing from here or dancing from how you feel. Um, and dancing from how you feel is the thing that makes people feel something, you know? Um, so I think a balance of that is needed, but a lot of people are on the end of like dancing from here. That's why I said musicality is a technique now. They dance from here. They're thinking about the technique of how to be musical, not just being it. Sometimes you got to let it control you. What up, King Mike? What's up, Ayub? Ayub knows that video, Rashad. That's a crazy video, that hip hop video. Poppin' Gway. Thanks a lot for doing this. I'm a proper from Malaysia. You allow me to understand more about dance culture. For sure. Thanks for tuning in. King Mike, Kaden, you're welcome, bro. And my mom says, I believe you can dance through the music. Get it, mom. Wise wave, Sweden in the building. Yep, Sweden's where it's at. Peep the mic. I think I must have missed a big gap on what you were speaking earlier. Will this video be on YouTube? Yeah, so every every episode we put on, um, I put on YouTube, um, except for some of the Q&As. But when it's a specific topic, I put it on YouTube. So I'll post it later, um, probably um, tomorrow. Daniel, the letter, any quick tips on getting down to music you're just not feeling? That's a great question. And sometimes not dancing is great. If you're not in a competition, you don't have to dance on every song. Like you don't have to force it, you know, but if you're not dancing all night, that's an issue. So, you know, be realistic about that. You know what though, dancing to music you don't like, sometimes you got to find one sound <laughs> If you could find one sound in there, it's kind of cool. You could start there and see where it goes. Sometimes, you know, 
you can psych yourself into it and just get into a character. You know, for me, it's all about characters. If I can get into a fun, playful character and smile or look at one of my friends and show them something we worked on, boom, I might just look like I'm having so much fun. I might trick myself into actually enjoying the song. You know, sometimes it's it, sometimes we overthink that. We're like, oh, oh God, oh, I don't like this genre. Oh God, what am I? Nah, just start moving. Start moving as you're going. Smile, find a sound you like or hit some movement you like. Sometimes certain movements will get you in a nice mode and your, your mood will change. And once your mood changes, it'll be, you'll be more open to the music. So, you know, things like that can help. Gianni, all episodes will be in the Funk and Focus YouTube channel. Thank you, sir. All right, Caden, I think people could also try to focus on music texture. What's the sonic quality of the layers of the music? What's the musical texture? It's not just hitting the sounds, but how you're embodying them. Yes, so, so true. Texture is everything. Tone and color is everything. Dance is emotion. So there's colors to the sounds. There's color to the song. And the, the idea of just thinking of it rhythmically, how it sounds, is so... Uh, narrow and tight and closed and restricted texture is so so important texture and tone that is a huge huge part of being uh musical huge part like one of the one of the most important things is texture and that might even need to go into my four principles I said in the beginning. That might be the fifth one. I know I talked about it, though, like the mood or the character of the song, the mood or the character of the sounds, you know, the rhythm, the words. But just to be tonal, to be tonal, it's really, really mature. It shows maturity. It shows a lot of maturity as a mover. Rashawn, what was the musical foundation of Washington, D.C.? So I grew up in Texas and Northern Virginia, but uh, check out Go Go Music, Chuck Brown, maybe Russ, maybe you can answer a little bit better on that musical foundation of Washington, D.C. We got Go Go. That's our own version of funk. And there's a dance called Beat Your Feet that they do to it. And uh, we got some MCs like Nonchalant. Um, and we got some different MCs coming out nowadays too from D.C. And there's a, a lot of jazz history. Duke Ellington was from D.C. And there's a jazz district on U Street. So D.C. is, you know, got a rich history in music. Gianni, after watching The Strutter's Room and participating, Rashad's popping intensive. I started listening to blues and funk from the late 60s, early 70s. And it's really nice to dance to that stuff. You, you, when you strut on blues and soul, things make a lot of sense. And if you strut on early funk, like Sly and the Family Stone, the JBs, James Brown stuff, it makes a lot of sense with the way it feels. So it's really, really important for strutting. And then Gianni said that that made a difference in the way he listens and feels the music and dances. So that's really dope. Stephanie, bad music is challenged during competition. Straight talk. It sure is. There's not a lot of variety in the events. I think I want to do an episode about that at some point. Uh, Usama, like I said last time, we have to watch and feel the music on your dance, not listening to the music and watching your dance. Feeling the music on your dance. If you can make people feel the music while you're moving, you know, if you can make people hear the music in a new way while you're dancing, these are all beautiful things that help with being musical. So Osama says, feel the music on your dance. Caden said, uh, texture, tone. These are really good things that we're adding now with this idea of being musical and what that really looks like. <laughs> Bad music in the club, that's always a challenge. What up, little Black? Thanks for joining in, man. Shout out Memphis Jukin. All right, Shashan, any tips if you are lost in the song or not feeling or thinking too much? Stop. Just stop and reset. When you feel lost, stop, reset, get into something. You know, when you, you it could be what am I saying? You could think if you need, if you need a thought to clear, 
if you're feeling too much and you know, thought, okay, what am I really saying here? Am I showing some waves? Am I showing something with a little bit of rhythm? Boom. Am I being clear? Um, you know, stop and, and sometimes getting lost in the song is also about starting too quick. If you don't take that time in the beginning to really listen, you, you need time in the beginning to just take that the few 10, five seconds, 10 seconds, really listen to what's going on. Let it develop. This is also like a nice way to let people's eye adjust to seeing you, you know, before you really start doing what you're doing. Uh, uh, Slim Boogie does that uh, every round. <laughs> he starts super slow. He stands. He walks around. He doesn't move much. He waits. He's listening. He's he's just listening. And then once he starts, we're already we're already used to looking at him. So then by the time he starts, it seems special. So that's kind of a little trick. But um, yeah, just stop and reset when you're lost. You know, and thinking too much has to do with just relax, breathe, focus in on one thought at a time or or just enjoying the music. What's your purpose? Give give yourself one purpose per solo. I'm just really funky and enjoying this song right now. I don't even need popping techniques. Sometimes just do that. Or, okay, I'm doing too many moves, too many ideas. What am I really trying to say? Okay, I've been working on tuts. Let's stick with that. Boom. Let me show them what I've been practicing. Bang right while you're enjoying the music all right wise wave i've gotten a lot i've gotten a lot my approach to texture feel and expression from my background in contemporary do you ever look at that part of the dance world for inspiration um a little bit not much um uh what's his name william forsyth william forsyth check out his youtube videos he has these ideas with shapes and lines and how he's drawing and creating shapes and lines I get you know I've gotten inspired a little bit more about like conceptual things from them but expression musically not not so much for me but it's cool that it works that can work for you Daniel the letter is there a specific genre of music you throw on to challenge yourself when training Ooh. Me and Rico used to do these practices where we would just go through, we would shuffle genres. We would challenge each other. We'd go from rock and roll to blues to jazz to soul to New York hip hop to Southern hip hop to funk to G-funk to like dubstep to like electronic trap music, uh, two-step music, garage music from London. I think for me, like jazz has been a bit of a challenge. Some of the like bebop and jazz stuff because it's so syncopated. So I think like jazz has been one of the ones that I've kind of like been like, oh, okay, I got to practice a little bit more on that. But the more you do it, the better you'll get on those genres and the, easy, the better you'll get at adapting to different types of music. It's a really great practice. Put what you love to do on different genres and it will change the whole character, the whole mood, right? And then let's see if those people can beat freak their way out of that. Because <laughs> you know they won't be able to. That's how you know who the best dancers are. I wish they would play popping, in popping battles, they would play like more electro and like, if they play blues, like some funky blues or some funky jazz or something like, you know, like some experimental stuff, really unpredictable and like challenge us, man. Like uh, play some soul music. Like I would love that. I would go, I would be so excited if they would challenge us in the battles. I would have so much fun. Uh, Stephanie, I like what you said about using character. I think that is the way out of bad music or also like you said, to find one thing you like about the song and go with it. Rashawn, how to get used to funk rhythms, which my body doesn't feel good about, but I really want to express myself on that. So there's some really simple rhythms that work on funk. Really simple. One and two. <laughs> won't, won't, bop. Won't, won't, bop. One and two, you see it in locking, you see it in popping. It is so important. Also, let's go through some basic rhythm. 
one, two, three, four, one. That's always going to work. Now, if you go one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, let's reverse that. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Let's double it up. One and two, three, and four. One and two, three, and four. Those rhythms right there always work on funk and they might help you to get at least a base layer of ways to move boom, 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 bang, boom, boom, bang, choo, choo, bang, to get something going, you know, but listen to funk, listen to, listen to it. Um, there's so many genres of funk, listen to all of it, see which, maybe there's a genre you really like and enjoy getting down to. Daniel Letter, do you have an opinion on all styles battles playing music? like light feet beats just because it's friendly to most cells. All style battles playing music like light feet beats just because it's friendly. Um, I don't know, actually, I don't know, maybe I have to rephrase that question, but I don't think light feet beats are actually friendly to most styles because most people don't know how to dance to light feet beats. Like people don't really know how to do it. Like Southern hip hop, people are just trying to dance to Southern hip hop now because it's popular, but they don't really know movement that really matches that, that foundationally fits, you know? So I think all style battles should, you know, be challenging people um, with music, but I don't like when it gets too weird. I don't like when it's outside of the urban genres and I think it's important to, if there's light feet dancers, to have some light feet music. If there's crumpers, to have some crump music. You know, if there's some jookers, have some Memphis jookin music. Like, because those guys shouldn't have to always dance on Jay Dilla or, you know, House. Like, it's important that we, musically, we all adjust. You know, they're adjusting. They're coming to the All Styles. They're dancing mostly on hip hop and house and popping, funk, you know break beats sometimes and you know it's important that we put that I think it is important that we put that in there for them um for instance I battled an all styles battle where they basically only played light feet music because it's hype and consistent yeah so that's like the same as people playing like popping beats only like electronic popping beats because people like to hit in popping battles it's that's silly you need variety like let's not pretend one thing's better one genre of music's better than another. Like let's let's actually show let's let's show like equality for all the genres, all the styles. It's important. So I'm I'm not down with that. Shushan, difference between music texture and rhythm. Okay, so music texture is the tone, the way it feels, the way the sound feels. A bass feels heavy. Boom. Boom, boom, real low, boom, right? That feels heavy. That's a texture, boom, right? A snare is more like clunk, clunk, you know, clunk. That's not really a snare. That doesn't sound like a snare, but let's say that this, the clap sounded like a clunk, you know? So the texture is how that clunk kind of feels like, bloop. you know, you see that's the texture. A snare that would go, you know, would be more like, kah, kah. so the texture of the snare can be different. It's the tone or the color of it. And rhythm is rhythmically how it's fitting the pattern rhythmically. So those are two different things. A sound can go ding, ding, ding. The rhythm went one and two, but the tone went Dee dee dink, which sounds like ding ding ding. That's kind of like sharp, you know. Dee dee dink. That's the texture versus the rhythm. In a nutshell. Sarah Rusta, what up? Music is the representation of numbers in time, so shouldn't dance be the representation of number in time and space? Trying to find something in that simplified definition. Yes, that is true. Um, numbers, math is actually important for, for rhythm, um, and it can change your dance. Damon has a lot of exercises where he cuts eighth notes into numbers, and then he gives you different rhythms, and you 
put those numbers on those rhythms. So you sequence the movement in different ways. So knowing the numbers can change the, uh, the movement, which is funny because that's what we're going to do in our private lesson tomorrow. <laughs> so we're going to work on this. Uh, me and Sarah are going to be working on music tomorrow and rhythms and, uh, we're going to talk more about it then, but I like the idea with music and numbers. The, there is ways to get involved with this, but if you get too, too much about the numbers, you're going to lose some of the rawness. Rashawn, what are those rhythms that Damon used to do, which are so clearly visible on you and Rashad when you guys showcase the feeling of not doing the basic bass and snare? But waiting for in-betweens and echoes, what are these rhythms? Eighth notes and sixteenth notes. E's, us, ands. Right. I did a little demonstration earlier where I hit the quarter notes and I showed where those were. Um, but again, right, let's go to Damon, go to Rashad. These things, people are, are working with these and making it really nice. Screechy. I'm probably saying all these names wrong. Helps if you know how to mix music because that forces you to know the numbers and the structure of a song. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Damon also produces music. I produce music a little bit here and there. And uh, so that, that can really help, especially for tones, structure, um, really understanding the difference between different types of sounds, even knowing the names. I think it's important. Like people, when they, like dancers, when they explain musicality, they say like, um, oh, that sound, <laughs> that sound. Did you hear that one that went boom? Did you hear that sound that went crack? Did you hear that sound that went, you know, like they'll explain like an organ in a really weird way. So it, it's nice to know, like when you produce music, you get to see like the names of all the sounds, you know, when you're a musician, you understand that, you know, like what the names of those instruments are. Really know, know the instruments. Um, all right, hold on one second. Let me just check if YouTube, yo, YouTube. All right, I got to go over to YouTube because I've been hating on my YouTube for a while. I've been on IG the whole time. All right. Pat Eastwood says, when am I going to post the other episodes? Oh, okay. All right. Actually, you know what? Change that. I'm coming to these after the hour is done on Instagram. We're going back to Instagram. We're going to finish out Instagram, and then we're going to move over from Instagram in about seven minutes to the Funk and Focus YouTube, and we'll keep it going from there. Okay. Siraj, why popping is a funk style? Well... Popping is a funk style because it was created on funk music in the mid 60s to James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone. Um, the, the whole, yeah, the, it's, funk is black music, popping is black dance in America. So this is, it's the reason why I said a lot of people nowadays made musicality into a technique, and back in the day, a lot of people just understood music. They, you know, African American folks that were creating and in the development of pioneering these styles, they grew up listening to funk, dancing on funk. When those songs were coming out, they were so experimental and different. Some of them, especially like uh, Parliament, George Clinton, and them, that it was creating new moves all the time. The whole idea was to have like a new style on this new song. You know, when uh, I think it's, ne uh, no, is it Neat Deep? No, 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 Flashlight. When Flashlight came out, and that was one of the first synthetic bass lines, it just made people want to do new things. And Damon talks a lot about this. So this, the music was evolving, funk music was evolving, and the dance was right there with it. If you follow the music, you'll find the dance. And if you follow funk's history, you'll find boogalooing, robot and strutting, popping. 
Daniel the Letter, is there a current current music artist that you enjoy listening, getting down to? Shoot. Oh my gosh, that's so many. Uh, Memphis Jookin, it's Project Pat. Probably f modern funk stuff right now is First Touch. Uh, listening, like MC wise, I like Odyssey. He's look like from Maryland. Um, I like I like listening to like FKJ and Masego and Tom Mish and this type of music. I really like soul music, and I like listening and dancing to soul music, like the Shy Lights, Blue Magic, um, the Temptations, ah, man, the Dramatics, all these these types of groups, yeah, really nice. All right, Renee, I saw in Hip Hop International Rules and Regulations that musicality is explained in this way. The upbeat, downbeat, tempo, vocals, and how you count the music. Simple time, double time, half time. Oh, that's really interesting. I'm glad you posted this. The upbeat, the downbeat, tempo, vocals, and how you count the music. Okay. So the upbeat and the downbeat, according to Damon, is just the downbeats are the quarters, the upbeats are the ands, right? Upbeats, and, and, three. The tempo, obviously we know understand what the tempo is, the vocals, and how you count the music, which is double time and half time, which is really interesting because they're not talking about instrumentation really, which is what I figured that they would probably be, be talking about. They're not talking about the color, they're not talking about the tones, they're not talking about rhythm creation. So I think it's an interesting definition, but I'd like to hear someone explain it. It's a little bit confusing, actually, because the upbeat and the downbeat is a timing thing. And then at the bottom, they're saying simple time, double time, half time. Oh, so you probably meant single time, double time, half time. But that's just quarters, eighths half notes, vocals, and how you count the music. Okay, that's that's kind of funny. They're judging your musicality based on how you're counting to each his own, but that seems a little bit kind of, that needs some refinement. Um, genocide, Anderson Pack, yo, Anderson Pack for sure. Anderson Pack is fire. Kendrick Lamar, Anderson Pack. I mean, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of Eminem. Mm, the guy that did the song with him, I think his name is Lucas Joyner. It's pretty dope. Like, yeah, I'm listening to a, I listen to a lot of different genres though. Like daily, it's like a lot of different types of music. All right, how much time we got? Oh, two minutes. When you say that nowadays people use techniques to better understand music rather than just feeling understanding, would you consider that a positive or negative involvement? Maybe a mix of both. I think it's a mix of both because here's what happened. People said people couldn't understand what musicality was or like feeling, right? So they defined it. Oh, it's, in, it's, it's the sounds. You got to hit the sounds. What that does is that limits musicality and being musical to one thing, right? So people got better at that. They got good at it. They got good at hitting the beats. But guess what? They forgot about all these other ways to be musical. So it, it was good in one way. We pushed one thing up. Now we just got to push the other things up too, you know. But if you treat musicality as like a, a technique in general, it's there's just a rawness. In, in popping in general, there's just a rawness that's missing. There's just a, a rawness that's lacking. And I think it has to do with all these definitions and this is the best technique and this is the best way to be musical have musicality and I think it's just we're just limiting ourselves we can't forget about what came before the way people were being musical before we got to remember these things and take it with us Monster Pop told us about your book of styles method of training where you pile two to three styles together to mix foundation but how does it actually help you in training because they get confused okay so I only got 25 seconds so that Check out more about the book of styles, me and Rashad. If you you can just write me offline about that about the book of styles, I'll answer you. Um, 
So thank you guys on Instagram. Let's go over to the YouTube because we got a lot going on on the YouTube for Funk and Focus. Um, every Sunday, every other Sunday, Urban Dance and Dialogue, Funk and Focus, Urban Artistry, Future. I'm out. And let's go to YouTube. All right, Pat Eastwood. Okay. When are you going to post the other episodes that are currently missing? Yeah, so I have the first q and I can post that if people really want, but let me know if you really want that to be posted. I just kind of figured like it's, the Q&As are kind of random, you know, like the episodes are geared specifically for a certain topic. This is how I've been doing it so far. I'm open to suggestions. Um, the Q&A is like, there's a lot of random questions that people want to ask sometimes, so I figure I'd do a and a every once in a while. But it's kind of all over the place. So I was like, I kind of wanted to chop a piece, a few pieces. Was there something in that Q&A that you really wanted me to chop out maybe? Um, the session with Steen and Rashad, I'm having copyright issues. So I'm still new to this stuff, you guys. So like, I'm going to do another one with them before I leave with Steen. Rashad's not here right now. Um, but we'll, we'll use not co uncopyrighted music, no copyright issues. I'm having, I tried to chop it up. I tried to speed it up. I'm having a million copyright issues. If anyone has a trick for that, let me know because I'm trying to take that. That's really good practice footage uh, with us and I'm trying to figure out how to get it online, but I just too many copyrights so far. Stephanie, if it's a crutch, then what should a dancer do for the 30 to 45 seconds, if not beat killing? So first off, events need to change their format. 30 to 45 seconds is ridiculous. I'm not even getting warmed up after 30 seconds. 45 seconds, no. Give me, I, I'm not warm. That, that's not dance to me. I'm that, you're not going to see me as a dancer in 30 to 45 seconds. You can't see all of what I can do. It's a limiting format that we're dancing in. 45 seconds is ridiculous. So what I do is I say, fuck it. Like I'm a rule, I'm kind of a rule breaker, but I'm also a tradition bearer. So it's, I guess I give you a little bit of both worlds, but I'm just showcasing who I am. I know my purpose with each battle I go in. I know exactly what I'm trying to say as an artist that day. And if it's not going to be the thing that's popular enough to make me win, I really don't care because I'm an artist. I'm not a puppet, <laughs> you know, like I'm not a trendy person a lot of what we we do has sparked some trends so i'm just on that path so i'm gonna show you something different in that 30 to 45 seconds that a lot of people haven't seen before or something that i represent traditionally and i'm just gonna showcase who i am and win or lose i don't really care because at the end of the day it's not really about the contest contest is just one element of dance there's performance there's education there's research there's ciphering, there's battling in the club, in the ciphers. There's all kinds of things, you know, and there's creative videos, there's theater. So, you know, be more than a, a contestant. And uh, in those 30 to 45 seconds, just be who you are. You're not going to impress every judge. You're not going to, uh, it doesn't matter. The, the real people know that if you didn't beat kill, but you had quality movement, people will appreciate that. Mason, what up, man? Been a little while. Do you think beat killing became more popular when the dance became more attractive to the masses? Yes, I do. Also, how do you feel about pros that have really good musicality but choose to beat kill heavy because the masses will enjoy it? Uh, I think it's whack. <laughs> I think it's whack. It's, it's, it's watering down your art to appeal to a large crowd, right? To appeal to the masses. Anytime you change your artistic vision based on what other people want in like consistently like that you're not really being you're not living up to to who you are as an artist and a and a dancer like you're you're being what other people want you to be there's nothing special about that like who in the history books you think the nicholas brothers did that like they actually that they probably had to for different reasons, but not not because they wanted to win a little urban dance battle. Like, but when you look at what they did, like they were a representation of their 
their their people and their community and their their dance they they represented that you know so a lot of the greats were different and they were original and they were their their own artists and they were different and that's what made them special so let's get back to that uh slick rick speak the truth about the musicality comment i agree back in the day we interpreted musicality very differently there was not entirely necessary to be with the beat it was more of a mysticism behind the musicality yeah and i talked to thomas about this today thomas herrock from uh, out of control steen's partner um from the the 90s 80s and 90s and he talked about how they were more into like creating a vibe out there they were about rhythm but it wasn't always but sometimes you would hit the beat but that would just be sometimes that would happen you know you would just hit the beat because it just happened um and you know it wasn't like the only thing you could do you were trying to mystify like you said like you were trying to give some cool character or an illusion or create a world and not always like hit the beat so i'm glad you mentioned that oh we got boogaloo dan yo boogaloo dan respect oakland boogaloo's finest right here shout out to all the oakland boogaloo's pop tart all the folks out in the bay repping for the brs boogaloo dan is in the house original oakland boogaloo the music has to be a part of your dna hands down without without none of us will be dancing and the world would be in more turmoil thank god for the music wow i can take a funky song that i might have never heard of but if it's funky i'm on it i also played two instruments in elementary and junior high school nice there are certain details in the dance that a lot of people don't pay attention to and they miss wow thank you so much dan for for commenting this is awesome you know and hopefully you know get you on here we do an episode with you if you want to next time we cross paths i'd love that um but this is this is what it is you know dan grew up in oakland you know he's a representative of that that city and he said he could take a funky song he never heard of but it's funky he's on it you know like he just people were adapting movement to sound people could just get on that song and and do it like that and I like how he talked about playing instruments too. Like I know Rico, my Jukin teacher, he also played instruments in uh, high school too. And his reason why he would, he had a really good ear for music and he heard things that other people didn't hear. And Boogaloo Dance talk about details in the dance that a lot of people don't pay attention to and they miss it. See, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the traditions and the things that were done before. There's so much detail that went into these things. There's a way, there's a method to the madness. So it's like when people water it down just by beat killing and thinking that's enough with some weird, ugly moves, people are like, no, y'all don't got it. Like you don't have it. Like you don't understand what you're doing. But then you get everybody going, oh, it's so dope. Wow. Oh, I remember Pop-Tart and Dan talked about this, how funny this is when they saw B-Boys and Poppers doing this. Oh, because <laughs> they didn't come from that. They didn't come from people doing this. You know, but like things, things really are changing. But if we let the quality and some of the traditions die because the beat freak and hitting the sound and spazzing out on the beat and doing it all sloppy, people like that, then man, we're just, we're losing the quality. We'll lose the quality in the dance. And that's a shame. All right, let's see. Hello, can you tell one more time what the four elements were? Okay. The four elements I said was character of the song, instrumentation, creating rhythm, and using the vocals. Oscar, what's up, Future? Any tips on how to make your own rhythms clear for the viewer so they understand what's going on, especially the ones where you become an independent instrument in the music? Yeah. I do. So I think, Oscar, let's take that one offline. There's certain things that's a lot of like, uh, it's Damon and Rashad workshop material. So I already gave quite a lot in this video. So let's write me a personal message and I got you.
Mason, it's content. I like having the Q&A to watch and learn from good questions, but they're not necessary to go up. Yeah, sometimes they don't have to. Audience. 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 It would be great if you posted. I still would love to hear those random questions and answer sessions. Okay. I'll try. I'll, I'll look. I'll look at it again. The Q&A. What up, Sid? Siraj, what is the difference between beat freak and beat killing? I think it's the same. I think it's the same thing. I think it's just a different term that people beat freak was the first thing I heard and then it became beat kill. But to freak something or to kill like it kind of has this aggressive tone to it. A beat freak, you know, like a beat kill. It's like this over the top way to be musical. Alex. Yo, Ryan, it's Alex from Boogie Nights. Shout out to Boogie Nights. Washington, D.C. Poppers. All right, y'all. I think that's going to conclude it for today. Um, again, Urban Artistry DC on Instagram, urbanartistry.org. Check out the Funkin' Focus Instagram. We'll be live about every Sunday or every, every other. Um, thank you for all the feedback. Um, thanks for participating. I'm really enjoying getting all this dialogue going and uh, I'm excited to see where we can go with it. And if you guys have suggestions for topics or for things you want to see on this channel, I'm really open. So, you know, like I want to hear what you guys have to say and see where we can we can take this thing. Um, oh, also the Funkin' Focus online courses. Um, for me, they'll be starting up in December. I have the whole month of December free. Um, January is a little bit tougher. February might be a little bit tough, but manageable. Um, Rashad's schedule might be a little bit different, but a lot of these things we're talking about here, we go more in depth with. And also, of course, we get down and show movement and all that good stuff. So, all right, y'all. Signing out, Assassins, Future, Urban Artistry. Peace.